All right, here's Linda, and I'm going to show you a new case that has a one latch. It is Nova Eclipse case, made out of carbon fiber, fairly lightweight, no wheels. We're going to take a visual. It has a glossy finish, exposed carbon fiber, it's not faked on, painted. No latches, except for uh, one actuator. We'll do the uh, stability test. It's empty, it does not have a cello in it. So it's in par with the other lightweight cases. I want to show you how this case opens. It has a single actuator down here. But it actually has uh, multiple latches that are internal that there must be a cable that goes around the edge and opens and closes the latches. I think there's actually seven of them, but you only have to um, actuate the one lever to make it work. So it seems to be a pretty good system and um, haven't had it out in the market enough to know how well it works long term, but I'm sure they have um, spare parts and things. Closing it, it's pretty easy. It seems pretty, also I want to talk about st stiffness. When it's open, it's pretty stiff. It's, I think it has foam inside the layer, so it stays pretty stiff. And closing it, you just snap it, which is kind of cool. So if you just hate latches, this is great for you. You don't have to bend down and do all those latches. Now, um, oh, the other thing that I, one of my musts is having a, a stiff back. This one, like the Musealium BAM, has a convex uh, contour on the back, and it doesn't move at all. It's very, very, very stiff. So I think, in addition to a layer of carbon fiber, there must be some foam in there, some dense foam. And we are going to weigh this case and see what it weighs. like it's in between a BAM compact and a BAM slim. It's 7.3. We don't have the backpack straps on there. And then I also want to um, put a cello in here. We're going to put a standard B pattern Stradivarius pattern cello. Cello made by um, Eastman. It's a Lombardi. And it's just a Strad pattern. So you can tell that it's a snug fit with a Strad. It's not too tight, but I wouldn't try to put a. Um, I don't think I'd try to put a Montagnana in this. In this case, you don't have anything other than the neck. Check the balance in hand with a cello in it. Seems pretty well balanced. If I was to say it was imbalanced in any direction, it would be a little head heavy, but that's not it's not too bad. It feels pretty good. This strap is interesting. It's kind of stiff. It's not it's, it's it kind of holds your cello and then you actually have to deliberately move it out of the way to pull your cello out. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the interior a little closer. I was showing you with the cello in here, this neck strap. One, these straps are fairly stiff. This one's especially stiff. I'm not sure what's inside of it. But you do have to deliberately move it out of the way. I've discovered some padding here in the, in the accessory pocket up there by the scroll. And this pad kit. Lay it out down here. 
it looks like we have three different sizes and we have four pieces for each size. We have six pockets in here which already are padded. This, this is about a quarter inch padding, maybe three eighths. And I assume that A would go in the bottom being it's, it's the longer pad. And this is a way that you could um, adjust Adjust the fit of your uh, case to your cello. If your cello was a little narrower, you can make some adjustments with these. And I'm sure they can even handle even more uh, foam inserts that you could probably make yourself. But it's an interesting feature. The interior padding in this case is pretty minimal. In the back, you have this back support. There's no shaped neck button here, so it really doesn't matter what your size of your cello is, except you wouldn't want to miss it. You wouldn't want a real short cello in here. If you did, you'd want to block it up from the bottom. We're going to go back down to the bottom. We have another pad that supports it um, away from the back of the case. And then this is a hard foam support, which is down by the end pin block, which is really important, because you don't want uh, you don't want to support it where the ribs are real thin and could crack the ribs. Um, when I had the cello in here, I did reach back and I did feel that there was plenty of airspace between the cello and the back of the case. And that's really important. I, I probably wouldn't carry a case that didn't have that because uh, I don't like doing sound post repairs, especially on the back of a cello. Now we're going to um, look at the lid. And the features here, we're going to come back up to the top. An accessory pocket, minimal. You could maybe put some rosin and a rock stop in there, that's about it. There's some little side neck supports, slightly padded, it's pretty dense. I'm going to walk around and we're going to look at the bow holders are your typical put over here. And then Velcro flap. The top's open, uh, so the bow could probably, possibly bounce out. You could stick a foam block here to limit it if you, if you wanted to. The uh, bottom pockets are closed. It's pretty typical. And you have this, this shaped tailpiece pad that helps keep your cello from moving forward. And you can actually see in the lid there's some thickness on the edge, especially over by the hinges. So I think there's definitely some foam layering going on here, like a BAM case. That gives it some rigidity, which is pretty important when you get to a lightweight case. Take some of the flex and flimsiness out of it. Close is easy. And I wanted to talk about the exterior hardware now. We have a leather handle. And these attachment points look pretty stout. It's not thin sheet metal. They look like they're cast. Um, there's D-ring attachments. All the hardware is actually screwed on with a machine screw and a nut. Which, so that means you could probably replace it yourself pretty easy. You wouldn't, it wouldn't require a rivet gun. Um, same with the rubber bumpers. They have little nuts in here. So you can probably remove those, and the hinges all have uh, Phillips machine screws. Four stoppers here. And four stoppers on the bottom. The fit up of the lid looks pretty tight. But I don't know how watertight it is. It didn't look like it actually fit in into, into any kind of lip seal. Okay, we have these straps that are not too typical. There's no carabiners or hooks or anything like that. We actually have, you can zoom in on here. I'm going to just work on one here. You have a little plastic bead and a cord, a pretty strong looking cord that's sewn in to the webbing. It's actually got four stitches going across the cord up here at the top of the webbing. So it's pretty stout. 
I've been messing around with these little bead things and figuring it out. My sister, who's kind of a horse person, has kind of told me how these things are supposed to work. So, and what I thought looks best is to come in from the top through the D-ring with a bead. And then feed the bead in between the, the cores. And uh, it's really fun to do, as you can tell, especially when I'm trying to show you and do it. Okay, now I'm feeding it through. And I think that looks the best. You've got your pad underneath, the bead came down from the top and went back between the cords and it's pretty well locked in there. And then when I do the bottom, I do the opposite, I come up, I come up from um, underneath. Up underneath. And then I have to weave in between two cords, struggling here. It's good and tight. I guess they don't want it to come apart once you get it set up. Um, that's a pretty solid, secure system. There's no metal uh, to scratch your case, and uh, it seems pretty secure and, and lightweight. So it doesn't add too much weight to your to your case. And this is well padded. It feels like neoprene, and it doesn't look like it would be sweaty. It has some ventilation, and it's adjustable. So it looks pretty well, well done. Alright, I hope that helps.